three. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend hey guys, welcome back to Positive Vibes. So I just want to introduce myself. My name is Shoshana, and my channel's name is Regal Designs by Shoshana. And on my channel, I do a lot of motivation, mommy videos, day in the life videos, cleaning, DIY, um, interior decorating. I also do a lot of shop with me vlogs and holiday, like seasonal decor and everything like that. Um, I also I do a lot more on my channel. So if that is something that you are interested in, I would love for you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you can become a member of our family here on YouTube and also go ahead and hit that bell down below so that you will be informed of any new videos that I upload daily. So let's get into today's video. So today I, I want to talk to you guys about um, trust. I want to talk to you about trusting in God. Um, this topic is a very personal topic is very near and dear to my heart because so many times over the course of my life I've had to lean on and trust God. Um, is it something that's easy? No, because you're trusting in an entity or trusting in someone that you cannot see but you completely and totally believe in and that is never easy because sometimes it's hard to trust in people that you can see um, but to trust in someone that you can't see that's where faith comes in and so over the course of my life my trust has increased dramatically with the Lord I have learned what trust truly is by just relying and depending on Jesus um, I'm just going to give you a little testimony so my husband and I um, we've been together well we've been married for 15 years but been together for 19 and um, we were college students when we first met and I um, fell in love instantly and vice versa and so we dated we courted for about three and a half years and um, we got married so when we got married after the wedding, after all that, all hell broke loose, okay? Like, we literally came home from our honeymoon a week after a wedding, and my husband lost his job. We received a pink slip in the mail as soon as we came through the door with our suitcases, and life began for us. So, it was like, okay, what do we do now? Because I've never left my parents' house. This is my first time leaving my parents' house and being away from my comfort. Um, and so I was just like, what is happening? How do you lose your job when you just get married? Like you just starting out life. And it was devastating because we had no idea that this was going to happen. There was no inclination there. There was nothing leading up to it. It literally just happened we crossed the threshold of the door and opened up the mail and our young lives was devastated and so from then on we really had to learn to trust god because we we're just like okay there's no mommy and daddy now we can't look to mommy and daddy to pay our bills or to give us money or do anything like that like now is the time that we really have to wake up and and this is the true test this is where it's going to come in but right after we got married this is crazy so we had to deal with that that was crazy so we had to deal with that then about five months later I got pregnant so <laughs> I got pregnant and had no idea that I was pregnant I just started feeling sick my body was weird um, I was a virgin when I married my husband so I never um, had to deal with any type of hormones or anything like that and so when I got pregnant I knew something was off because I've never had to deal with that besides just having my cycle and it was it was tough for me um pregnancy was extremely hard I was sick I want to say six 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 months out of the nine months that I was pregnant I was sick with my daughter in my seventh month I got into a car accident with my baby I was pregnant 
Um, I was driving to work in my Kia Rio and a, a Durango hit me, like literally spun me in the middle of the road and flung me to the other side of the road. And I thought, okay, this is it. I did not, I didn't really see it coming. I didn't know what in the world was happening. Um, but all I knew was I just, I was cradling my stomach. I started to feel cramping and everything like that. And I was, I was terrified. I was super scared because I just got into a car accident and I'm pregnant. And all the questions are going through my head like, am I alive? Am I dead? Is this what heaven looks like? Heaven looks like my street? <laughs> you know, so had to deal with that. Then after that, I gave birth to our daughter and two months after she was born, we found out that she had Down syndrome. Okay, wow. Have to, having to deal with losing a job as soon as we got married, um, having no money, um, calling, you know, my, my husband's mom to ask, asking her for help, um, you know, my husband couldn't find a job. He was looking for a job, could not find a job. Now, we're college. Like, we went to college. We studied, uh, you know, <laughs> business, marketing, advertising, all these things. Why can't we get a job, right? So we couldn't, he couldn't get a job. I got a job in, like, motherhood and maternity and um, easy spirit and things like that. Then after that, boom, I got into a car accident being pregnant, seven months pregnant, now our baby is entering to, into the world and she found out that she has Down syndrome. We had no idea what that was. We had no idea what the struggles ahead was going to be. We had no idea that it was going to change our lives drastically. Like completely upside down. It was nuts. Okay? So she was in the hospital for three and a half months. She had open heart surgery. Before she had open heart surgery, um... She had PSD and, v PSD and VDA, which is she had a hole in her heart, so all the blood was leaking out into her body um, and causing her lungs to shut down. They tried to put her on the bypass machine. Um, she stopped breathing for one minute, and they had to take her off and resuscitate her. So she died three times throughout the process of her being in the hospital. Um, and God completely and totally restored her and bring her, brought her back. Um, she had acquired pneumonia. She had, um, it, she, it's, it was just a lot. It was so much within that three and a half months period. I had to stop breastfeeding because she had a breathing tube, um, down her throat. And it just was chaos. During the time, my husband was still working. He was working. I wasn't able to work, um, so I had to quit my job, and I was devastated. My first child, just it just was crazy. I started questioning God and asking Him, like, I got married, I was a virgin, I waited, I did all the right things that I thought I was supposed to do, and yet and still, I'm going through hell right now. And... I had to really learn how to trust God in three and a half months. That whole process taught me how to trust God and how to build my faith in Jesus for healing for my daughter, for, for strength, for peace, <laughs> you know, for all these things. And God was moving even in the midst of everything. He was moving. I saw his hands moving. Sometimes it wasn't quick enough. Sometimes it was, I felt stranded. I felt like, God, where are you? These things are happening. Where are you? We got to the point of where the doctors are just like, there's nothing else that we can do. Um, she's fighting, and she's fighting hard, but there is nothing else that we can do. And at that point in time, I was just like, okay, there's nothing else that you can do. Okay. My husband and I, we went on a fast, and we were... We were bombarding heaven. We were just like, God, if you don't do it, then it cannot be done. And we believe and know that you are the healer. We know that you are Jehovah Rapha and that you can heal this child. You haven't given, us, given her to us for no reason. You have a purpose and you have a plan for her life. And we are going to trust you in this circumstance. Was it easy? No. 
wasn't all you know happiness and joy and it was not it was it was hell it was feeling like it was torture it felt like we did something wrong it felt like we were being punished and even in the midst of that God's peace was so evident our family couldn't come I mean we it was we it was us by ourselves and God alone there was a nurse that was there um, in the hospital and she was a light I felt like God placed her there to be an angel um, she would watch over our daughter she would help her she would take her out the bed and hold her and you know she would encourage us I mean she was like a legit angel after we came from the hospital we went back to see if she was there and there was no no sign no documents no nothing for that nurse and it was like what are you kidding me and so even in the midst of that there were children in the hospital and parents going through hell we had uh, about a, I think it was like two kids that actually passed away in the midst of that season of our lives and we were trying to encourage the parents and everything like that we prayed for one of the family um, their baby who was on a breathing machine as well and she passed away and we just was like okay God what's happening why are we in this situation why are we surrounded by all these things that's happening there is a lesson to this that we have to learn there were other Christian families that were there that did not believe God's healing and I did not realize that you have different beliefs of, of, of Christianity some doesn't believe in healing some doesn't believe in <clears throat> you know the resurrection which I'm just like how can you be a Christian and not believe in res resurrection or healing and so we were trying to talk to those parents and encouraging them about listen God is a healer Jesus is a healer believe for your child and so that whole thing that whole process um, happened and throughout the course of three and a half months we saw God's hand move. I'm I'm going to delve more into a video and explain to you that whole process. But I just wanted to talk to you about just the steps that we took to get to the point of where we are today. To where trusting God is more of a lifestyle for us. So after all that happened, our daughter, she was able to get an open heart surgery. So she had an open heart surgery at five months. Um she had that she was released on Mother's Day of 2006 she came home and we had to do the whole process of having um, physical therapists and speech therapists and occupational therapists all these therapists come into our home um, all these doctor's appointments that we had to take her to then she had infantile spasms a year later she had um, she had seizures for two and a half years we had to trust God in that situation and believe God for her continuous healing after that we um, we took her off the she was on Topamax and oh my gosh it was crazy how many Topamax milligrams she was taking daily she was taking eight pills of Topamax daily we decided okay this is crazy she's lethargic she's not showing any signs of life or anything like that she would just sit in the corner and just sit there and do this and not do anything. We knew we did not want our child to be that way. And we knew we did not want that for her life or for our lives. And so we decided, plus they wanted to give her a tracheostomy. We had to trust God in that because they were just like, if either she has a tracheostomy or you can, or she'll pass away. We had to trust God in that. And we were just like, no, all these paperwork they brought us. We was like, no, she's not going to have a tracheostomy. We are going to trust God in its totality that he is going to heal her. That was hard for me. My husband was more of a faith person. Um, my faith wasn't there yet, but I believed God and I knew what God can do because he has healed me from asthma. And so I know that if he could have done that for me, then he could do that for her. And so he completely healed her. She did not need, need a tracheostomy. She did not get it. She came out of the hospital um, throughout the time of her having the seizures and everything. We believed God. We went on a fast again. I was just like, Lord, show me what to do to get her off of this Topamax. 
and he literally showed me what to do we researched everything that he gave us um, in terms of like the coconut oil and the natural you know elements that we could incorporate in her diet we did that for three months we started weaning her off without the doctor's orders off of Topamax and she completely came off Topamax she stopped having um, seizures we brought her in voluntarily to the hospital for them to do EEG studies on her for 24 hours they almost took me and my husband to jail because they would not release her and we were going to take her out of the hospital. I mean, it was crazy. Then after that, just the whole process of her having Down syndrome, just a lot of medical issues to the point of today. Fast forward today, she does not have seizures anymore. She's completely and totally healed. She's no longer on any medications. She's been medication free for six years. And God has completely and totally healed her. Today we are believing God to completely and totally heal her from Down Syndrome. Now you may be like, that's kind of far-fetched. Down Syndrome is something that she's born with. Okay. But we truly believe that God can heal her development and heal her completely and totally from Down Syndrome. Throughout our lives, my husband and I had to learn how to trust God. In every situation, we got evicted, we got our car repossessed, we had um, our house was in foreclosure. I mean, we went through a lot in the course of 15 years. And let me tell you, I almost committed suicide. My husband almost committed suicide. Um, we almost lost our marriage. We almost went through a divorce because the pressures of life was so difficult we decided that we were going to trust God in every single situation and if nothing happens then it wasn't the will of God but what if the will of God for us is to fight and to survive and to you know prosper and we chose that direction we decided that we were going to trust God no matter what the circumstances no matter the situation even now today, being that we closed on our daycare and all that, we are learning in this season of our lives to really trust God. To trust God for our everyday provisions and to trust God for our businesses to increase. To trust God for everything, for our children, for our marriage, for our mindset. So I'm learning to continue to trust God. Trusting God is a continual process. So I just want to encourage you today that if you are going through anything in your life, the best thing that you can do is trust God. The best thing that you can do is give it to God. He said to take up my yoke because it's easy and it's light and to take up my burdens. I am giving it to God. I place everything at his feet and I am taking up his yoke and I'm taking up his burden because it is easy and it's light. And I have learned that in my weakness that God's strength is made strong. And so my desire is to always please God. I desire to serve God all the days of my life and to trust God all the days of my life. To be a role model to my children, to women out there, to anybody out there that is going through a hard time or just have circumstances that feels like it's overwhelming. I want to encourage you today to lean on the hands of God and trust in Jesus because he is well able and he is a very present help in the time of trouble. Lean on him. Don't let your circumstances, don't let your situations overwhelm you or take you over. Give it to God and trust him. He will make a way. He always does. All he wants you to do is give him your heart. So. I just want to encourage you today, and if you don't know the Lord Jesus, I want to encourage you to get to know him. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he is the Son of God, and just like that, you are saved. If you need to learn more about Jesus, leave a comment down below and let me know, and um, or you can email me at shoshanabowens at gmail.com and request, you know, scriptures or, or just an encouraging word. And I will definitely 
get back to you and we will definitely talk to you about Jesus and you know just leading you to leading you to him and just giving you encouraging scriptures so today I just want to encourage you to trust God give him your all and know that he is always going to be with you he said I will never leave you nor forsake you I am with you even until the ends of the earth so I love you so much today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this word encourages in you, encourage you. Um, my daughter today is completely healed, completely free from seizures and meds. She's 13 years old when they told us that she wasn't going to make it past one. And today she's running around. They told me I was never going to hear her say mommy. And today everybody is mommy. She calls everybody mommy. And she's talking. You guys have seen her in my vlog videos and everything. She is a bright light and she is such a light to our family. And I just, I'm just so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to God. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a fantabulous day. And I will see you guys in the next Positive Vibes. Bye guys.